Hello again, I am Jim Bob and welcome back to Aston Martin Challenge Mode for F1 Manager 22, a series where we deliberately make things hard for ourselves with some self-imposed regulations. Uh, those regulations can be found in the video description below, so do check them out if you're curious as to what they are. If you're new to the series, uh, for those of you that have been following me since the beginning of the series, uh, welcome back to the 13th Grand Prix of the season. Uh, we are heading to Hungary for the Hungara Ring, uh, a circuit where we might do okay in the grand scheme of things. We're still not going to be challenging for points here, I don't think, but we should... I hope do a little bit better than we did in France so uh, let's see we have four days to go until the Grand Prix let's see what we have to do before then if anything uh, car part developments we're gonna get our uh, spare parts done I actually forgot to do those last night so uh, as soon as I entered the stream uh, I made sure I made those spare replacement parts uh, to replace the ones that we lost in the crash uh, so we've got a spare chassis um, and a spare suspension coming uh, so we're gonna have one spare of each going into the next Grand Prix we've only got one rear wing at the moment I thought I was working on a rear wing or did we lose that as well? I think I lost that as well. Must have done. So I am going to go ahead and make another spare new uh, rear wing as well. Uh, so, no, you know what? No, we'll hold off on the rear wing. Just in case I end up making a new one this season. I don't know if I will or not. But, uh... If we do, I don't want to have unnecessary spares clogging up the warehouse, costing me money that, you know, is unnecessary. So, uh, evening Farah, good to see you. So, uh, let's instead check our drivers. Do we have any points yet? No. What about our staff? Uh, no points for our staff. There's nothing else we can do, I think. I think our facilities are either upgraded or nearly upgraded. Could go with another scouting upgrade, but I don't really think we need to. Operationally, everything here is pretty much okay. Got a couple that are starting to get a bit low, but we can uh, refurb or upgrade as we need to. So let's just have some time. Uh, we do have a couple of scout reports back by the look of it. Uh, that was uh, Ti Chuang and uh, Fred Gill. Uh, no, sorry, Robert Marek. Fred Gill is the name of our scout. Let's have a look at Robert Marek's profile. So he is a 70. He's only 36 years old. He's got good chassis. Uh, very good side pods, but everything else is pretty appalling. 57 front wing, 67 rear wing, 61 underfloor, and 66 suspension. He would be a massive downgrade if we were to hire him. He's up massively on those two categories and down in everything else. So he is definitely not one for us to hire. Okay, let's take a look at T's profile. Now that we have a report on him. Uh, so he's not bad actually. He's got decent chassis, decent front wing, good rear wing, very good side pods, decent underfloor, decent suspension. He's still a free agent. And he would be a massive improvement on Andrew Green. And is younger. Remember, we can't sign anyone at the end of this season. We've got to wait till the end of next season to replace Andrew Green. But we're trying to scout out some potential candidates. Uh, we will get some new candidates popping up probably next season as well. So we'll have to bear that in mind. Um, so I guess we go ahead and carry on. 
scouting. I don't think Pierre's going to want to join us, but we'll scout him out just in case. Just so he can get his details on file. Um, I've used Simone Resta so much on other playthroughs, I'm not going to be signing him. Even though he, I know he's out of contract at the end of this season. Um, but he's going to be potentially signing a, a multi-year deal at the end of this year with either the same team or moving to a new team. So I don't want to incur the expense of then trying to sign him um, at a high cost. Mike Elliott, it's the same situation with him. I know he's out of contract at the end of this season. Um, he will move on somewhere else and then, or maybe stay with Mercedes, but he's going to sign a new contract that could be many years. So again, we'll ignore that. Nisha is 53. I don't want to sign someone that old. Um... That's why I'm not going to scout FX um, or B. Uh, let's take a look at Ji Ning. I mean, she's 42. She's not that old. But a 73 isn't a great rating. Um, we've already looked at Michael Huber and he wasn't that great. I don't think Hataro Goto is going to be that good either. But we'll take a look. Because uh, you never know. Might be something we can work with. So there we go. That's our three scouts uh, redeployed. Uh, evening, Patkins. Evening, Anthony. Good to see you guys. What's our pit crew looking like right now? Uh, up to 76 now. Okay, so we're four away from uh, my designated switch point. Any other in inbox stuff to deal with? No? I've got Matt Harmon's profile back as well. Uh, and Matt Harmon is very good. Uh, he is expensive to sign at the moment because he's in a... He's still got a few years left on his deal. But at the end of next season, he might well be worth signing. And these stats will have improved by then as well. Maybe not by much, but they will have improved. So, yeah, Matt Harmon is currently top of my list. Uh, potential signings to replace Mr. Green at the end of next season. Okay, so we have advanced to race day. Uh, I, again, do not think I have enough of a car to actually make anything on these incentives here. Uh, let's take a look at our car as well, going into this Grand Prix. So this is where we stand for Hungary. Uh, 15th and 13th in speed and acceleration. 9th, 17th and 19th in, down in cornering. 17th and 19th in DRS, that's terrible. 13th, 17th and 19th in high speed cornering. So we've actually lost some performance in the low speed dirty air against the rest of the field as well. Our braking has lost a bit of ground against the AI as well. And our engine calling is not great. Let's uh, take a look at Williams because Albon's been getting better. That's still a pretty rough car. That's Latifi. Let's see if there's any difference between Latifi's car and Albon's car. No. They're the same. Uh, what other teams can we look at? Let's take a look at Mercedes. Not Mercedes, sorry, McLaren. We have been close to them in uh, recent races, although they do have a driver edge over us. Um, yeah, that advantage that we did have, it's less now, I think. I mean, they're not massively ahead of us in a couple of areas, but they are in others. We do have better brakes, much better brakes. So maybe that will be our saving grace against McLarens that they'll just keep locking up. Um, they've got the worst brakes on the grid. Uh, Haas, let's take a look at Haas. Uh, yeah, they're better than us pretty much everywhere. Acceleration, even though there's a, a difference that we're all tied. 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, all tied on that same... Uh, acceleration speed there or a g-force so 
yeah, that's that's going to be a real problem. I don't think we're going to be able to hang with Schumacher at all on that one. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Alpha Tauri uh, for Sonoda. Uh, and again, we're really going to struggle to stay with them in this race. Look how fast they are with their acceleration and top speed compared to us. And they're better through all the cornering apart from uh, low speed normal cornering. I don't think there's anyone else we can really compete with. So, yeah, I think we're going to struggle again in this race. I think uh, we might be able to take it to the McLarens a little bit if we get a good start and hang with them. But, yeah, this is not going to be a good race for us, I don't think. Uh, this is what the circuit is going to look like in terms of uh, sectors. We're good in the low speed, but we're not so good in the medium and high speed. And that's most of the circuit, unfortunately. So yeah, this is this is not going to be a great race for us. And the next race is going to be horrific for us because that's Spa and it's just flat out almost the entire circuit. So uh, yeah, we're going to really struggle in the next few races. Um, of all the ones coming up, this might be the least problematic until we get to Singapore. The Hungaro Ring is a buzz with excitement as Formula One returns to Hungary for another round. We first came here in 1986 after construction on this purpose-built motorsport facility was completed. The Hungaro Ring is one challenging succession of corners and turns. With few straights, it's affectionately known as the go-kart circuit. Drivers will have to find a proper rhythm to make the most of the layout. And for cars, low-speed downforce will be paramount. The season is about halfway through, and it makes me wonder what else is in store for the teams. Well, there's only one way to find out. There's nothing like a race weekend in Formula One. And the weather's not going to help us out here either. It's just clouds, no rain, so uh, I think that would have been a bet when I would have been our best chance of maybe sneaking some positions through uh, capitalizing on uh, pitting but yeah we'll just have to make do as best we can uh, let's take a look at setups first of all before we do anything else so i have uh five different setups in my notebook to choose from uh, i'm going to go with a 10 and a 15, a 3, 7, uh, a minus 2.75, and a 0 0.05. So that's my opening setup there. Uh, for Felipe, we're going to go a little bit uh, less. We're going to go a 9. 15, a 1, 9, uh, a 3.45, and a 1. So a very different setup there. Uh, but both of those have individually given me a 100% rating before. So um, opposite ends of the scale, but we'll see if either of those comes close. Uh, it would be ironic if they were the right setup but on the wrong car. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to need lap-wise here. It's quite a quick lap. Uh, it's a deceptively short lap. So I'm going to go, I think, with 21 laps of fuel. Uh, we'll drop the pace. Uh, let's do the same for Freddy's car. Go 21 laps of fuel. Drop the pace. And let's swap out the parts before we go any further into the session. Uh, so engines, I want the worst engine that I can realistically use, which is that one and that one. Uh, ERS modules, it's going to be that one and that one. And then gearboxes, it's going to be that one and that one. All right, into practice we go. Radio check. Radio check. 
Okay, should be green now. There we go. Uh, cars are set. Let's speed some time up. Uh, evening, Cory. Evening, Jeremy. Uh, do I think Arsenal will hang on to the top spot in the Premiership? Uh, to be honest, I haven't really been paying that much attention to football this season. I just, yeah, just haven't really paid any attention to it. I've, I've seen the odd result here and there. Um, I know my team aren't doing amazingly, which doesn't help with my enthusiasm for watching <laughs> any of the highlights um, I've seen Arsenal at the top but I've not really seen any I've not seen in the results often enough to see a run of form I, I, I honestly couldn't say I'm not even sure how far ahead they are I know they're, they're top but I've got a figure that City are going to come good and overhaul them you know City are what they are um how did the cleaning go today? Uh, what cleaning? I'm not sure. Oh, hey, Jer. Ah, right. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you said, hey, Jim, how did the cleaning go? Uh, right, I understand, yeah, based on yesterday's conversation about Jeremy's new job. Yes, I remember. Uh, I, I just misread. I thought it was Ed Jim. Yeah. I haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> I should probably put them on. Ah, there we go. I can actually see properly now. Yes, that definitely makes the uh, the small text a little bit easier to read. Uh, right, where are we? Let's speed time back up. Oh, we've got a crash. Yeah, copy. There's been a crash. Sounds like a single car. Let's have a look. Now let's watch this. Has, uh, the had a wobble. Oh, that's a big spin. We see that's crash. a big hit as well. Uh, once again, it does not look like anyone is running a reserve driver. Looking at the list. Yep, it's just first team drivers again. Corey can't wait for Formula One to come back because he's missing it. Well, this is the closest thing. Uh, we do um, full-length live races uh, with this at, at normal speed. We don't speed up the races themselves. Oh, Felipe's locked up, but he hasn't put it in the wall. That's good. Oh, big lock up there. Anthony's never seen a reserve driver. They, they do come out, but it's usually once, maybe twice a season. Uh, and not every team does it. I've seen um, Giovinazzi in Ferra uh, pop out for Ferrari once, once a year, maybe twice a year, every now and again. Um, occasionally, I've seen, I think, Stoffel pop in for McLaren. Um, but yeah, it doesn't happen very often. Coming in or doing any more. Uh, we're at 85% for Freddy. That's not too bad. 80% for Felipe. Okay, so a bit off on both cars. Let's give him another lap or two before we call him in. 
we will call him in slightly early. There we go, let's call him in now. Right, looking at Freddy first. No, Felipe first. So we need to change the traction. So the roll bar is a bit too extreme. Let's go to a 2.8. Let's go to a 9.5. That will hopefully be enough of a change on the straights to make that go optimal. Um, let's go to a 3.05 and a 0.45. So this converts to another 100% setup I've got. Um, it's close. I don't know if that's going to affect the straights enough. It's not going to affect the traction enough. Um, let's go to a 3.7. Uh, a minus 2.8. And a 0.5. How does that look? That looks a little excessive on the cornering. Straights doesn't look like it's done enough. I'm trying to see if I can convert this to a setup I've already got that I know is going to work. Uh, I've got a 10, a 15, a 37, a 2.75, and a 0.5. Yeah, the cornering just looks a bit too excessive for me. I'm going to dial it back a bit to there, and I'm going to move that to there. Uh, I'm going to go like that, and like that, and like that, and I'm going to give that a go. See if that works. I'm just going to wing it on this one. Um, let's change the tyres. Uh, Vesti needs to... Wow, that front wing can't go any, any higher. Uh, the rear wing is right on the edge, needs a tweak, so that's going to be a big change to cornering. Uh, and I need to drop that to a 9.5 to move the rear wing angle without moving the rear wing itself. Um, so let's go with that. Let's pull that right in. And let's try that. See how we do with that. Again, we're winging it on this one. I think. Oh no, wait. I do have uh, a 952. That's a 2.8 and a point five. Yeah, that's the wrong side. So again, we're going to have to wing this one. Alright, let's give that a go. they'll add a create team and make car movements a lot smoother uh, yeah there's uh, there's definitely room for a lot of improvements uh, I think it's almost universally wanted is uh, the ability to have a custom 11th team like uh, added into the game so if someone can create their own team from scratch uh, I, I think if it's done right it could do really well if it's done badly it could ruin the game um, I think the whole way that they do things in the game is going to need to change quite a bit, really, to make a create a team thing work. Um, so, as much as I'd like to see it, it's not high on my list of priorities, as long as they fix and, and improve the core game experience. Um, and really dial that down and make that much more satisfying then I can live without the creator team. Uh, 
Farah says he had two red flags during his first season. Um, but what are the rules? Uh, it depends. Um, it depends on when the red flags come out. In practice, you will generally lose about 20 minutes of a practice session. Uh, in some cases, you might only lose 10 minutes um, if it's towards the end of a session. Um, but you might just lose 20 minutes and that'd be pretty much the session over. Um, if it's in qualifying, um, it tends to just end qualifying. Uh, it shouldn't do. It should stop the clock and then restart the session with the clock at the same point when the red flag came out. That's how it works in real life, but in the game, I think it just seems to end qualifying instantly. Uh, during the race, um, it, end, it stops the clock um, and the lap counts, and then you generally get a 10-minute window. Sometimes it's a little bit more, but it's generally a 10-minute window or 20-minute window to make um, changes to the cars if they can carry on. Um, it's, if you have minor damage, like a front wing... Um, you can actually change the front wing, uh, you can change your tyres. Um, you'll generally find that your battery will not be recharged, so you'll start with the same battery charge you had when the red flag came out and the session ended. Um, but you will find you'll gain, you know, maybe a couple of, you know, you know a lap or so, maybe a lap or two laps worth of fuel. Um, which can be a bit of a pain, you know, it can make your car quite heavy, but it's the same for the AI as well. Uh, and then you restart the race uh, from the order that you were running in when the red fire came out. Uh, again, in some cases, if the red flag comes out right towards the end of the Grand Prix, it will just end the Grand Prix. In reality, um, I'm not 100% certain on the red flag rules because it used to be uh, if the race was red flagged um, and the race had done uh, less than two thirds distance or three quarters distance, you just got awarded half points if the race couldn't be restarted. Uh, and if the race had done more than three quarters, I think it was, the race just ended there and then and it was a four point award. I think. But, you know, I'm, I'm not completely up to date with the uh, the red flag rules in real life Formula 1 right now, so... Not 100% certain. Uh, if you did not restart in the same positions... Uh, yeah, it might have been a bug. Because you should have done, you should have restarted in the positions you finished, you were running in when the, the session was ended. So if you were running one and two, when the red flag came out, you should have been in first and second at the restart. Okay, we have 83% with Vesti. So I think we've actually lost a couple of percent on Vesti's setup there. Um, what about Felipe? Oh, he has improved. That's good. So yeah, we've gone the wrong way with Vesti.
Another lockup for Vesti. He struggled like the last couple of races. Up. He struggled. He locked up multiple times at the same corner in practice at France. And he's had a couple of lockups here. Lots of penalties. Uh, Leclerc, Alonso, Bottas, Schumacher, Joe. Uh, and I was thinking of taking a penalty for Felipe here as well. Hmm. Let's see how we go. Right, let's take a look at the setup. Where did we go wrong? Ooh. Okay, we went very wrong in that direction. Uh, we're going to have to change the uh, roll bar. We're going to have to go back to a 2.8, I think. Uh, I need to really, really go that way. And that needs to go all the way to there. How am I going to get that back there? I'll have to try something like that, I think. I don't know if that is the right way with the traction, though. Uh, it has messed up my oversteer slightly. Actually, no, it hasn't. Because it wasn't good to start with. Hmm. Let me try that. Oh, that's not enough. Um, I don't think that's enough either. Uh, I'm struggling on what to do with this one. Let's give, let's give that a go. I'm going to go with hard tyres for Freddy. And because I'm struggling with this one, I'm going to do a double lap run. So I'm going to go 20 laps. Uh, and then at the end of 20 laps, I'm going to bring him in, make some changes and send him back out again. Uh, as for uh, Felipe, his car looks to be easier to set up. So hopefully we can just do a single run here. Um, I need to tweak this a little bit. Pull that down to a nine. Actually, am I going the wrong way there? I might be going the wrong way. Let's go to a ten. Let's do that. Pull that back in a touch. I was optimal actually on the on the front and the rear. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, so that's optimal on the front and, and back. Slight change to traction, small changes to braking corner. Let's try that. Uh, and we're going to go with a 28 lap run. of a head scratcher this one. Radio check. Radio check. Green light, green light. Oh, another lockup. 
Both of our drivers, drivers struggling a little bit for brakes at the moment. I think a two-stop strategy for this Grand Prix is going to be the way to go. Maybe a soft, medium, medium. Maybe even a soft, medium, soft if I can make them last that long. I don't think I can. But medium, medium, soft might be doable. If not, maybe a hard, medium, soft. If we can make the medium, medium work, that will maybe give us a slight edge. Both of our drivers are decent when it comes to looking after their tyres, although the car itself is not so good at looking after its tyres. It's better than it was at the start of the season, but that's not saying much. Right, we've got some feedback for Freddie, and again, we are miles off. On coming in or doing any more. What is going on with this setup? All right, so we've gone way too far with the roll bar. So that has to go to a 2.8. How am I going to reconcile a 2.8? Um, well, let me try that. I did break the front wing slightly. Now I'm worried I'm going to break the rear wing by doing that. Pretty much certain I'm going to break the rear wing doing that. Uh, can't squeeze any more out of it that way. I'm going to have to go back to a 10. This one is breaking my brain. <laughs> uh, let's give that a go. Oh, we've gone the wrong way with Felipe. I'd better call him in as well then. I'm really struggling to get the car set up. So, uh, cornering needs to go this way. Uh, that's probably going to need to go to there. Front wing. Uh, let me just revert this back for a second. Okay, so that's my 92. Uh, and that's with an optimal front wing in that position. So that needs to go that way. 
that is going to break the front wing that might break the rear wing I am really not confident about any of these changes here give that a go but I'm not sure that's gonna work I think I'm gonna break the straights with that setup there let's take some fuel out let's go to 20 laps Every now and again, this game just throws up a session where, or a race weekend where it's just really difficult to nail the setups. I've gone to circuits with half a dozen 100% setups in my notebook and not been able to use a single one of them. And just not get anywhere close for the first three attempts which is effectively where we are now came into this one with five 100% oh, setups and right none there. of them are close Hopefully one of these uh, tweaks setups that we've come up with will come we good. But I thought that on the last run. And now I'm not quite sure what to think with these changes that we've made. I think we'll be closer to 100, but I don't know if these are going to nail it. And 97, I can work with 97. That's That's close. That's going to be just one thing that needs to be tweaked a bit. Well, probably just one thing. And 97 with Drogovic as well. Again, it's optimal 97, so it's probably just one thing that needs to be tweaked. Maybe the cornering, maybe the front wing. Yeah, front wing. Okay, so let's try that change. We'll run that in the next session. Uh, I didn't get the time to change Felipe's car, so we'll do that back at the main screen. I do need to make sure that that uh, change I made to Felipe's car has definitely gone, oh, sorry, Freddy's car has definitely gone through. Sometimes it doesn't, and it just puts me back on the same one again. Yeah, that is the new setup there. Uh, we're going to go mediums. I'm going to hope that we can just do a single run. I go with 26 laps of fuel. Again, we can call in early if we need to, but I'm hoping we won't have to. Um, I'm going to go 23 laps of fuel. I don't think 26 is going to be enough, actually. Uh, cornering just needs to change. Try that. Not convinced. 
I'm going to go with 28 laps. I don't know if 26 is going to be enough. Uh, right, let's uh, see if we can nail both of these cars this time round. 22. Is going to be up first with the feedback. Please both go to one hundred. I don't want to have to faff about again. I might just leave them at 97. Sounds like we've had a spin. If the uh, if these don't work out. There we go. 100 with Bestie. And what about Felipe? 100 with Felipe as well. Excellent stuff. Right, given that these two setups have caused me quite a bit of a headache, I'm going to add them to the notebook. So let's call them both in. There we go. Felipe is about to arrive. There's Freddy. So let's have a look at these setups. So pen's not working. There we go. So I've got a 10.0. Uh, 15, uh, a 3.7, uh, a minus 2.8, and a 0.2. You know, that's not actually a million miles away from my other 10, uh, which was a 0 0.275 and a 0 0.5, 0 0.05. Hmm. Uh... So we'll ignore that and let's take a look at Freddy's setup. It's a 9, a 15, a 2, 8, a 3.25, and a 0.9. Yeah, that's very different to the uh, one that I've got here, which was a, a 3.1 and a 0.6. So we'll add that one in as well. In fact, actually, no, uh, I don't have a 9.0 with a 2.8. I've got a 9.5, two 9.5s with a 2.8. And the only nine I've got is a one it's a one nine on the roll bar, so this is a definitely a new setup for me. Uh nine point oh fifteen uh, two eight uh, minus three point two five and a naught point nine. So we've got two new starting setups added for next season. So that gives us a bit more flexibility with options. Right, uh, we are done with practice. I'm not quite sure what I've just tried to change there. I think I just put more fuel in the car. Yeah, I haven't changed the setup. Good. Uh, so we just need to run the clock down now. 
and then uh, take a look at parts maybe take a penalty for Felipe I've got to try and think tactically here as well races where I know I'm not going to stand a chance races Don't like watch, Spa for example the next race after this one where I know I'm going to get absolutely demolished um got to decide what I want to do in terms of engines do I want to run really weak knackered engines at races where I know I've got no chance to save the ones where I might have a chance um, for the better engines like Singapore and by better chance I mean you know an outside bet of actually getting points I mean, the weather can go crazy at Spa sometimes. If it's dry, oh, we'll get annihilated. If it's wet, anything can happen. Well, almost anything. Just have to kind of play it on a race-by-race -race basis, I think. See what the weather forecast is going to be and make our decisions based on the weather. So we've got uh, five other drivers taking penalties here. I think I'm probably going to join them with uh, Felipe. I don't know about Freddy. He might need to take more new parts. Let's have a look. I've got two good engines for the rest of the season. Um, I'm just going to put one of those in now. Is this one still relatively new? Yeah. So we'll go with that engine for this uh, for this race. Let's have a look at uh, car two. Again, I've got two good engines, and that one is not bad. So I don't need to take an engine. Uh, ERS modules, 52%. That is right on the cusp. ERS modules go down at 50%. So let's use that one. And I've got loads of ERS here, so I don't need to worry about that for Felipe. Uh, gearboxes, I've got plenty of gearbox life available for both drivers. So I don't need to worry about, yeah, no penalties needed. I must have been mixing them up with uh, with Williams, maybe. Uh, or Haas. So, yeah, no need for penalties. That is something, I suppose. Right, let's see what we can do. Radio check. Radio check. They should be green now. So, as always, we're going to watch both runs in their entirety because this is probably the only session we're going to be in. There's Felipe. Let's get him to not fight just in case he catches up. Don't want him to ruin his lap and Freddy's lap at the same time by forcing Freddy into defensive cornering. Given the difference in pace stats between our two drivers, I am expecting Felipe to be the faster driver once again this weekend. And I'm expecting the gap to be around about three tenths of a second. I'd be very happy if it's less than that. If it's only a tenth, then I'll be very, very happy with that. Ugh. <sighs> 
very tired right now. I was, um, uh, I only slept for a few hours last night, I think about four hours in total in the end, um, maybe less than that. Uh, got up early today because I was uh, waiting for a delivery from Royal Mail. I didn't want to miss it. Uh, I ordered the Clone Wars board game, um, which uses the pandemic gaming system for anyone who's played either of those board games. Um, I've played three games of it today, two solo games, just to try the rules out, and I, I played another game with a buddy over WhatsApp earlier. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Lost my first game when I was still getting used to the rules. Won the second one against the same opponent, Asajj Ventress. And then uh, the game where I played with my buddy Rico. Um, we went up against Grievous and he stomped us. <laughs> we got close to uh, to completing. Um, but yeah, he just overwhelmed us in the end. We got caught out. So many blockades popped up and the threat level hit the limit before we could deal with him. So, uh, usually when I finish a stream, I'm usually up for another two, three hours afterwards. Tonight, I think I'm just going to hit the sack straight away. All right, Vesti is actually faster, but I did see a little bit of traffic on the lap, and that might have caused a bit of a problem. So, we shall see how that goes. on the second run. Let's put on some fresh tires for the second run. So we're going to go out in about 10 seconds. There we go. That'll do. Uh, so let's send both drivers out at the same time. Who is leading? Felipe is leading but he's probably going to pull over for Vesti which means I need to switch them back over immediately again I may have just screwed that up I must remember to uh, cancel the uh, don't fight commands on the on the uh, the cooldown lap, so I don't end up immediately doing that when I come out the pits. Uh, I don't think Felipe is going to be close enough to uh, close back up, and we are now in a position where I'm going to give a tow to a Williams, which is not ideal. Which Williams is it? It's Albon as well. It's the worst possible one to give a tow to. Uh, so, with that in mind, uh, I am going to take manual control now, to speed him up a bit. Now we'll get him away and through, and now we'll do the same with Freddy. And let's go full attack. Push a bit more. Come in. Use energy. Yeah. With both drivers. So we just need to push now. Yeah, copy. Use energy if you need. 
and let's see what we can do. We are a couple of tenths off Sonoda, but I'm expecting him to improve a fair bit. Uh, we're half a second off Ricardo. Not even close to the McLaren, the McLarens here. Both our drivers are up in the first sector. And Felipe's up in the middle as well. All right, round the final corner. And Felipe improves, goes uh, four tenths faster. I don't think Vesti improved. Albon improved a little bit by about four tenths. Uh, right, let's see what is Sonoda going to do. Uh, we've closed the gap to Ricardo, so traffic did definitely play a part in Drogovic's first run. Slight improvement from the leads. Both our drivers are out, as expected, but I'm seeing all these penalties here. There is a chance that we're going to jump at least a couple of places. Uh, so we ended up... Oh, look how close we were with Yuki. I thought we'd be further away than that. And that's the kind of gap that I was expecting between our two drivers. Uh, at least three tenths of a second. And there it is. Three and a half tenths. Nearly so... Um, yeah, Felipe's in with a chance. He's not that far off Yuki at all. He's literally, what, three thousandths of a second off Yuki's time there. Uh, he's only a tenth or so off Daniel Ricciardo. A couple of tenths off Joe, who has got a penalty. Hmm. Maybe not all is lost. Maybe we can get a top 15 the finish here. come for these drivers to fight it out wheel to wheel. Race day has arrived. There was some good work from Aston Martin during the qualifying session, and they will go to the grid full of confidence. McLaren did well during qualifying. They maximized their potential and are in a good position for the race today. A sunny day here with only a few clouds in the sky. If things stay this way, the weather should impose any challenges to the team. And we're just over 300 kilometers away from the conclusion of this Hungarian Grand Prix. And each and every one of them is sure to be thrilling. Uh, is a one-stop doable? I think it is, but tyres are going to be rubbish at the end of each stint. Um, so yeah, you can see it is doable. They're not going to be great on in terms of tyre wear. I mean, the AI has the option of a one-stop. They will probably two-stop for the most part I think some will one stop but I think for most will two stop uh, I am thinking of doing something like this so that would give me room to push where I need to and that works out oh wow that's eight seconds faster 21 seconds faster so yeah the two stop is definitely the way to go uh, so let's take a look at uh, converting this let's go with mediums at the start then mediums in the middle and finish on the softs A 
Can I even go soft, medium, soft? Can I make that work? It's not quite as quick. The tyres are right on the edge. I'd have great pace at the start of the stint, but they would fall away a lot quicker. I think medium, medium, soft is definitely going to be the way to go. If I go with that, yeah, I'm going to go medium, medium, soft. Um, and we'll see what happens with safety cars, if at all. Uh, so let's make that our default strategy here as well. Um, so medium, medium, soft. There we go. Uh, I'm going to take... This is a, a circuit where you can actually save a lot of fuel. I'm going to take two laps of fuel out on this circuit. Um, might even go three. I'm going to go three laps of fuel. Off. For whatever reason, it's just really easy to save fuel here. Um... Plus, we're still going to be way off the pace, so we are going to get lapped at least once. I think, I think that's doable. Yeah, there we go. The drivers there lined up on the grid under mostly sunny skies. Aston Martin there. Slower than most yesterday, so today they'll be starting from the bottom half of the grid. There's the second Aston Martin. They're in the back half of the pack, so they'll need to work hard if they want a podium finish. The race start is mere seconds away. This is it. The Hungarian Grand Prix. <clears throat> it's lights out and all right, we I'm seeing go. a mixture of medium and uh, medium and soft tyres. Nobody's starting on the hards. We've got... Oh, wow, we've got quite a few cars behind us. Leclerc is all the way down behind us. He's already jumped one of the uh, Williams boys. This is good, come on. Uh, it's going to be a struggle to stay with Sonoda. Hopefully we can. Albon's having a look at the inside of us. The grip on those soft tyres is going to help him at the start. That's it. This is going to be a very interesting race, I think. Ferrari's going to be a problem. Kind of want to keep it behind as long as I can. But at the same time, I don't want him harassing and haranguing my drivers all the way through. Uh, and forcing me to drive defensively and, and lose the train. Sonoda's being held up by Norris and Ricardo. They're both on mediums. So that's good. I would imagine they're going to get dropped by Joe pretty quickly.
Yeah, knowing <clears throat> knowing the tracks, knowing which ones are easy to overtake at, um, uh, where you can uh, try and force the uh, force the the overtake in, in, at certain places, certain parts of the track, it, it helps. Um, uh, a, a, a knowledge of real life racing on those tracks can be helpful. It can also not help at all in some cases because this is obviously a video game implementation uh, and not 100% realistic. That's something that's definitely more useful for when you're actually physically driving, like F122. Um, less so here, but it does still help to have that little bit of knowledge. So the more you race on the tracks, you'll come to understand the characteristics of them in terms of where the cars are going to kind of follow each other, where the, the main overtaking opportunities are uh, that you can try and capitalise on. And then, you know, understanding the game mechanics will make it easier to figure out exactly whereabouts those overtakes are really realistically possible. Sometimes you'll get overtakes where it's just not realistic. Sometimes you'll get uh, overtake. You won't be able to overtake at all in places where you would normally sometimes see overtakes. But yeah, more often than not, it's the former rather than the latter. Well, I'm glad I've been able to help you out. Um, yeah, it's one of the reasons I like to do these streams is uh, to pass on my knowledge to other budding managers. All right, DRS has kicked in. We are still in range for now. Uh, Ricardo has been dropped by Joe, so we're all going to be sort of racing to Ricardo's pace for a bit. This is a double DRS zone on this one, so as long as you make the first DRS zone, you're automatically getting in the second one as well. It's a single detection for, for two DRS activations. We might have to push Freddy a little bit. There is a risk that he might get dropped out of position when the Claire tries to force his way through. I'm hopeful that won't be the case though. Alonso's back there as well. He's going to be coming through. Bottas is going to be coming through as well. Verstappen's going to sprint off into the distance in this Grand Prix, but Leclerc should. I mean, he seems to be struggling to get past these cars in the early stages, but he should theoretically be able to punch his way through quite quickly and start making his way back up the order. <sighs> Sorry, stifling a yawn there. Um, like I said, really tired at the moment. Uh, I think, given that I'm being chased by fast cars, and that I'm hanging on to Sonoda, who's on softs, does not make any sense to really push at this stage because it's going to be a struggle to get past Sonoda and more likely than not he will just get his way back past me with better traction out of the corner somewhere so uh, I will just keep poopling around like this for a while not using up my tyres, not using up my fuel not using up my battery uh, and let his tyres go off a little bit and then we'll look at maybe trying to push through a little bit. The only time we're really going to use battery in these opening laps is probably just if Vesti has to drive overly defensively like he is kind of at the moment and is close to being dropped by his teammate. He seems to be hanging on okay right now. Again, I'm amazed Leclerc has not got past him yet. He's been swarming all over the back of him, all the way through the whole lap.
fact, I think this is the first time I've raced on this circuit since the patch that fixed the DRS. It used to be, you know, cars would just fly past with DRS on this track. It just doesn't happen so much anymore. Especially in season one with a dirty air. Um, and you can see now Vesti has lost ground. So we're going to push Vesti. That's the wrong car. Uh, we're going to push Vesti to get him to try and catch back up again. Use energy if you need it. Use energy. I don't know if he's going to make it. I'm not going to push the tyres. I'm just going to use the battery and hope that that's enough. But Leclerc driving so aggressively but not being able to find a way through is causing Vesti to have to go defensive in every single corner. Which means he's taking slow lines in and slow lines out. I think we might just get back in DRS here. It's going to be close. We just made it. So let's go back into neutral mode. Let's actually ride with Bestie. You can see him taking a tight line there because of uh, pressure from Leclerc. Alonso not really putting any pressure on uh, Leclerc because he's being put under pressure by Bottas. Schumacher's got past both the Williams cars as well. And again, you can see taking that tight line as Leclerc tries to go through. And he is actually looking like he's going to make it this time. There we go. It took him seven laps to get... Uh, up past uh, Vesti, 86, five laps, five laps, and he had to get through the other cars first, but even so, um, yeah, it took him a while to get through, and he's already all over the back of Felipe, uh, yeah, just in front, and now we're going to come under pressure from Bottas and Alonso as well. What's going to make this potentially quite difficult for us is when these faster cars get past not just us, uh, but past the McLarens as well. Uh, they will start closing up on Joe very quickly, and it's whether or not the McLarens can stay with them. And if they can, as again Leclerc finds his way through at the chicane, it's not traditionally a uh, a strong place to overtake it's a very risky overtake place in real life but that's two, cons two consecutive laps he's just forced his way through there with no problems whatsoever uh, Vesti's about to get dropped again Advance the race position. So use energy yeah once Leclerc gets ahead of the, uh, the McLarens if he can push He's going to push uh, faster than he's doing now. If the McLarens can stay with him, Sonoda's going to stay with the McLarens. I don't know if I'll be able to stay with Sonoda if he starts doing an extra half a second a lap. So it's a little tricky, you know, this situation that's potentially developing here. Uh, we could end up getting dropped by the pace of Leclerc once he gets into that clean air. Having a knock-on effect to the rest of the cars behind. Let's ride on board and watch uh, if Leclerc is going to have another lunge at the chicane again. Not this time. Sonoda might be a bit trickier to pass. He has got those soft tyres on, so he's got that extra grip. 
but the soft eyes don't last amazingly long at this circuit. So he may well come under pressure very soon. In fact, he's under pressure now. Can Leclerc make the move around the outside? This is a very brave overtake. I'm not sure, but I think we might just have lost DRS there. We did. Okay, now we're in trouble. Now I've got to push. Use energy. Yep, help it. This is always the risk when a faster car is pushing through and punching through like this, is that, you know, he just creates these gaps. And if you're not quick to react, you can get dropped very quickly. You can use energy. Use energy. You can use energy. I want to try and close both drivers up as much as I can here. Just to give us a little bit more wiggle room. Again, I'm not going to try and go for the overtake yet. There's still way too much pace in Sonoda's car for us to even consider making a move. This is very much a play the long game kind of race for us, I think. But you can see how much fuel we've saved already. We started at what? Um, four, minus 4.8. We saved almost a kilo of fuel in 11 laps. For some reason, you just save fuel so quickly on this circuit. And look how far ahead Verstappen is compared to where we are on the map. We are only 30 seconds off, but look at the distance on the map itself. It's almost half a lap. It's a very quick lap. Very easy to get lapped here. And I get a feeling we might even get lapped twice, <laughs> given the pace that Verstappen is showing right now. He's got this race in the bag. The only way he's going to lose this race is if he does something stupid. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ricardo was not able to stay with, Le with Leclerc. That's good for us. Because the pace will settle back down again. Uh, which it needs to if we want to keep Vesti in play because he is still getting absolutely harassed by uh, Alonso and Bottas. I would love to try and get some more battery in the car, but in a train like this, you, you just can't do it. It's not just the Red Bull car itself that determines Red Bull's, uh, you know, Verstappen's pace. It's his stats. He's so highly scoring in all the important stats, you know, especially when it comes to pace. Excellent cornering, braking, um, reactions. Uh, his uh, accuracy is good. Uh, I'm not sure what his smoothness is off the top of my head. Um, but he's so well-rounded and so high-scoring in all the important stats. Uh, mainly those top three, the uh, the braking, the, the, uh, the cornering and the reactions.
you have three stats that are really really high in there you are very fast this is why piastri is so so fast as a rookie uh having never driven an f1 car before he's still lightning fast because he's got high braking high cornering and his reactions aren't amazing but they're not horrendous uh, and they are miles better than anybody else in his age range <laughs> You know, he's, he's got no smoothness at all. He's got smoothness 48. The only one I've seen with really considerably lower smoothness is uh, Jack Doohan. But, you know, yeah, Piastri's pace stats are incredible. Oh, we've got a lockup and we've got a yellow flag. Someone has gone into a wall somewhere. Was that a lockup on the track? Oh, it's Let's Leclerc. Look at the replay. Watch this. There's Leclerc. Oh, he hasn't gone into the wall. He's managed to keep it out of the wall. So he's just dropped behind Joe. Who he'd already got past. He'll be back on him again in a lap or so. Right, so note is actually being dropped by Norris. Those tyres starting to go. They're not far off. Alonso's tyres are almost done. We started on used tyres, as has Russell and Joe. So yeah, not surprising that Joe was passed by Ricardo so uh, by Leclerc so quickly. Vesti again is on the cusp of being dropped. Let's give him a little Can push. I can only do this so many times before I run out of battery. There's no point trying to break the gap to Alonso because I don't have the pace to do it. And even if I could, <coughs> yeah, I'd only be able to sustain it with battery. And as soon as the battery runs out, Alonso will back on me straight away. Ah, uh, there we go. We're back in range, and that's probably the last time I can do that. Yeah, there we go. Battery's empty. But now we're going to be running at uh, Sonoda's pace, because he's dropping away. So we might actually see Felipe challenge for 13th place here. Vesti again, almost a second off the pace already. It is a second off the pace because uh, you know Felipe is looking very aggressive right now. This is good, Scott. So he's pushing hard and he's opening up a gap. But Vesti just cannot follow. Partly because of his pace stats, partly because he's coming under pressure and having to drive defensively through these corners. done all I can and the only way I can keep my drivers together now is if I sacrifice uh, Felipe's pace which I do not want to do so uh, we're just going to have to let that gap stay as it is hopefully Vesti can just about hang on but it's going to be very tough Sonoda's tyre is definitely starting to struggle a little bit now. You can see he's falling further and further back. Up to lap 17. 
of 70 and we've already saved 1.3 kilos of fuel. Starting to think I could have taken an extra lap out. Russell has pitted. So this is the first of the soft runners pitting and Joe is pitting as well. Which means Alonso is probably going to pit this lap. There he goes. Right, hopefully that will give Vesti a bit of a breather. And Latifi's in as well. That's early for Latifi. Considering he started on new, on new softs, I thought he would have gone an extra couple of laps, but apparently not. Right, what has everyone gone on to? Hard tyres. Ooh, now that helps us. So, their pace isn't going to be amazing. They're going to have a, a bit of an advantage over us with those brand new tyres, and they will last a while, but... They don't have amazing pace on, on this particular circuit. So while they'll be durable and they will last and be a bit more consistent, new mediums will definitely have a brand, uh, uh, you know, a big pace advantage when we do make our first stop. Once again, we are hanging on to DRS with uh, with Vesti here. Drogovic is hanging on quite nicely, but it's a struggle for Freddy. It's only just about making it. You're doing a good job. Keep pushing. And <laughs> my energy levels are crashing hard right now. I'm struggling here. <laughs> Hopefully I don't fall asleep on the stream. <laughs> that would be, uh, that'd be bad. Just the sound of uh, V6 hybrids going around with the uh, the intermixed variable of uh, random snoring as I make my own Formula 1 engine noises <laughs> So you're thinking of going with Aston as your starting career on PS5? Yeah, they're a good choice. Um, Williams is a bigger challenge uh, simply because, than Aston, simply because their budget is about ten million dollars, uh, ten million dollars smaller. Um, they are quite similar. The Aston has a slight advantage pace-wise uh, to start with over the Williams, um, and obviously they have. A better driver lineup, although you know both teams give you wiggle room in terms of choosing whether or not to make some changes. As we actually do look like we're going to make our way through side by side, still. Good job. There we go. We are just about through. Oh, no, Drogovic is, like is not quite able to make the move stick. So now they're going to lunge down the inside. He is. Who's going to get the DRS? I think it's going to be Yuki. Which isn't ideal. Yeah, it's Yuki. Um, yeah, Aston Martin's a good team to start with. Um, 
The car's not great, but it's balanced. You know, it's not overly bad in in some areas and, and good in others. Um, you know, all the areas are fairly well balanced. Um, as I say, HQ facilities aren't too bad. Uh, Staff-wise, you need to change your uh, technical and aero chiefs. Apart from that, um, yeah, your engineers are, are, are okay. You know, they're better than the Williams mechanics. Better than the mechanics on quite a few teams, actually. Uh, so they're worth keeping, you know, uh, if budget is an issue, based on what other changes you want to make. Um, Haas, depending on how well you get your head around the upgrading system, uh, Haas can be a team you can do really well with in Season 1, uh, and you get massive amounts of uh, hours for testing. And, uh, and development because of where Haas finished the previous season which was last so they have more hours than anybody else available in each ATR period um, yeah we are dropping Sonoda now I'm going to put Vesti into Harvest for a few corners we just need to charge up okay. just try and get a little bit of extra battery back in the car and um, we'll switch the camera to him as well. Um, the Haas have got a car that can do very, very well, but their facilities are the worst in the game. They've got um, terrible facilities. Uh, a lot of the support facilities, you know, things like... Um, I don't think they have a, a, a team hub. I don't think they have a... Uh, I'm getting under pressure here. Damn it. Can I hold off? Uh, I don't think they have a race sim. Uh, they don't have a helipad. They don't have a tour centre. Uh, um, there's quite a few. I don't think they have a boardroom either. There's quite a few facilities they don't have. Um, so facility-wise, they're they are worst on the grid. Um, their budget isn't massive. But they've got a strong driver lineup compared to some of the other teams Magnussen for his faults is, is, is a pretty good driver and I say if you sort the brakes out that Haas can do really well and with the right research and development you know you can end up with a monster car in season two because you had all those hours to really really work it and improve it Aston or Williams, either of those two is a good choice. I would still recommend that whichever team you go with, you do implement some kind of challenge rules. Um, they don't need to be overly restrictive like we're doing on this series, um, unless you're playing as a top team. Hey there, Mr. Water. Uh, if you're looking for a team with the most to do, uh, I would say it's probably Williams. They have uh, a little less hours, I think, than Aston, or uh, similar hours to Aston, but they have a, a budget that's like $10 million smaller. Um, they have a slightly worse driver setup. Uh, as we are seeing some of the medium runners coming in, no, no, this is the other soft runners, isn't it? The other medium runners haven't picked yet. And they're going hard as well. Uh, and now, uh, Freddy is very much isolated. Bottas is already on the back of Felipe. It depends how you want to play. Um, if you definitely want to change the drivers um, and you want to go for experienced drivers, then Aston Martin gives you a bigger budget to be able to do that. 
with a car that is almost identical in sort of pace. It's maybe slightly, and I do mean slightly, quicker than the Williams. Um, they also have a better reputation, uh, so it's easier to get staff uh, and drivers to sign for Aston compared to Williams. But either team, because they are in rough shape, either team are a good bet. McLaren is a, a is a decent one. If you go with some restrictions for your testing, McLaren's a good one to go with as well. Again, it is possible to win the World Championship in Season 1, or it was. Uh, I don't know, it should still be if you do the car right. I did it with Norris before the... Uh, before the safety car patch and DRS patch, but I, I can't remember if I did it before the tyre patch or not. But I did win the Drivers' Championship with Norris in Season 1 and came within about 30 points of winning the Constructors. Um, might have been before the tyre patch, I'm not sure. But again, McLaren are a team that give you um, a good strong budget you've got good drivers you've got a terrible car but it's easy to upgrade uh, and get some performance out of it uh, and again they've got the reputation for you to sign pretty much any driver or staff that you want apart from staff belonging to Mercedes pretty much anyone else will, will be willing to sign for McLaren though so I mean they're a good team to go with um, but they're not the biggest challenge for that you're going to be looking at Haas um, I would say not even Haas really uh, Haas with the restrictions like these hardcore rules yeah that's that's a real challenge um, because of the lack of facilities and budget means you know they have a lot of upgrading to get done um, but just in general terms of which teams are going to be the hardest Aston and Williams those are the two Right, we are going to be pitting soon, and I get the feeling we are going to be undercutting some of these medium runners in front of us. gap between our two drivers uh, about three and a half seconds it's almost enough for a double stack without uh, that's about right for a double stack without holding up uh, Vesti so I think we will go for the double stack let's go on to the, uh, the mediums there for box, the, box. the end of this lap do the same with Vesti and just to help I will just put Vesti into charge mode for a couple of straights I've got to be careful I don't get gobbled up here all right Russell's through to be honest I'm not surprised he got me in that zone there I'm just surprised he didn't get me on the start finish straight let's see if I can hang with Russell on the way to the pits. Probably don't really want to. Do not want to be getting too close to uh, the back of uh, Felipe. And I have to sit there doing nothing in the pits. So about 4.2 seconds off. It's probably about right. Let's go back into neutral now. Right, and we had to back out and let him through because we're going into the pits. Otherwise, we would have fought that a bit a bit harder. Really? 
Copy. So make sure you get your pit limiter, pit limiter as you come in the pit lane. All right, so one of the McLarens is coming in next lap. Good stop for Felipe there. Here comes Freddy. Oh, much better stop. Look at that. Where are we going to come out? Drogovic gets out ahead of Sonoda by a good couple of seconds. That's excellent. And Freddy comes out just a little bit behind Schumacher, but we are on better tyres. Or at least faster tyres. So hopefully we'll be able to catch him up. Yeah, that was a big yawn escaping there. Apologies. I do have some battery to push with. Let's uh, start using that. So use energy if you need it. So Norris is in. What's he going on to? Is he going mediums or is he going hards? He's probably going to go hards. Yes, he's going hards. That's excellent. The AI is doing what I thought they were going. Medium, hard, soft. By the look of it. We've been lapped by Verstappen already. And uh, Norris is about to get lapped. Felipe is about to get onto the back of Norris. So I'm going to push. Energy if you need it. And there we go. We're on the back of Norris now. Even though we've got faster compound of tyres, he's got a better car than us and he's a much better driver than uh, Felipe. So this could be tricky. I think we're close enough to stay there for the rest of this lap. How is Vesti doing? He's just about got on the back of Schumacher, who he has got on the back of Sonoda. I'm going to have to completely drain the battery here just to stay in with a shot of getting DRS. We have low batteries. And then there we go, that's the end of the battery. Uh, I'm actually going to push the fuel for these last couple of corners and hope Stop that's enough. Coast. We just need to charge up. Copy. I don't think it is. I'm not even sure if Schumacher got the DRS. I think he probably just did. Yeah, he did, and we didn't. Nah, that's not great. Uh, hopefully they will hold each other up give me a chance to catch them uh, Verstappen is now into the pits coming out into turn one now so we are not lapped again and that is hard tyres on the, uh, the car there and hard tyres going on site uh, mediums on Gas or has Gasly not reached the pits? He's not reached the pits. There we go. Hard tyres for Gasly as well. So, yeah, it does look like the vast majority of the field is going to go medium soft, uh, medium hard soft. Although, if Gasly's done 30 laps on mediums and then gone to hards, he could go on the one stop here. So, we've got a mix of strategy from the AI then, by the look of it. Some are one stopping, some are two stopping. This is a potential one stop here for Ricardo. And you've got to say the same for Bottas as well. Alright, we are on the back of Norris just. We are still hanging in there with him. Uh, Vesti is not able to stay with Schumacher and Sonoda. I'm going to stop pushing. Okay, happy to lift and coast. Yeah, coffee. Just hope that they uh, hold each other up with their squabbling here. Again, this is 
I wish I had a bit more battery. But I had to use it all just to try and stay with uh, Felipe as long as I did. Uh, not a lot I can do, apart from just hope that I can stay close enough to get in range and then stay in range when I do if I do eventually get in there. Uh, so let's go back to Felipe. There's Norris catching Bottas. No, wait, Bottas has just come out, hasn't he? So probably not going to catch him. I go around the outside of Norris we might actually have him here yeah we do we're through all right let's push see if we can get onto the back of Ricardo who's just been overtaken by Bottas Used energy. Yeah. Leclerc in the pits he's got to be thinking of a one stop here Aston Martin with a great play there they've moved up a place Closer to Ricardo, but I think Norris is going to hang on for DRS. Going to be extremely tight. Not sure if he made it. Oh, apparently Djokovic didn't make it. I could have sworn he was in range. Apparently not. Well, he is in range now. Uh, I've got a go back to neutral because I've got no battery left uh, Norris we dropped him game on Schumacher has dropped Sonoda which has allowed us to get onto the back of Sonoda We're going to take the opportunity to try and get the car recharged a bit. So Schumacher's going to get away from us. We can't really do a lot about that, but uh, we can, uh, you know, get our way past Sonoda. I want to make sure I've got some battery for when we do get past. The last few corners is just dropping me out of range. Did I make it? No, <laughs> I missed it. Just We approach the half distance of this race. to get lapped by Verstappen again in the worst possible place
So I get a terrible exit out of the final corner onto the longest straight on the game. No, oh, sorry, on the track. That's just going to drop me massively off the back. Have some over there. All right. How's Felipe doing? He's still able to stay out of Norris. He's still staying with Ricardo. I'm going to make sure I can get that gap closed this time. And that's Felipe's battery empty and he is still not in range. And I think our tyres are getting to the point where we are losing the tyre advantage. To the point where it's going to be very tough to stay with these uh, McLarens now. field has gone on to hards apart from us this section of the track that hurts us as we go through the medium and high speed stuff mm. yeah Drogovic is dropping off as well I think we've reached the limit of our pace. Interestingly, though, we have actually opened up a bit more. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, it's because Ricardo's coming. It's over Verstappen's coming through. I was wondering why we've managed to drop Norris with a bigger gap. And yeah, it's because he got lapped. And we're getting lapped. And now Norris is going to be all over the back of us. And we're not going to have the pace to stay with the snap and so we are now going to be vulnerable to Norris
just need to get onto the back of Sonoda. Uh, I'm gonna have to really go Happy for it. Push. And just hope I can make it. I'm gonna give myself one lap pushing like this. Use energy. do the same with uh, Drogovic if I get past which is looking more and more likely to try and get some battery in the car all right we've got inside the range now we're just going to stay here till the end of the lap I've got nothing left to push with I've used up all the battery I can generate this turn Stay close enough to these last couple of corners. Oh, they didn't tell me we're going to drop out of range again. It's going to be touch and go. We just made it. Lift and coast will help. Yeah, and there we go. Norris is through. All right, 31 laps to go. I am fighting through this fatigue for you guys here. I want to try and make sure we get this race done. Uh, I'm going to have to push to get back into the one second of Norris if I can. Energy if you need it. Don't know if I can make it. it. No, nope, we fell short again, which means we are going to be vulnerable to Schumacher now. Just starting to slip down the order a bit. I think uh, my best bet here is letting Schumacher get through. I'm just going to stay in charge mode. Uh, again, we're right on the edge of getting DRS off Sonoda, but we're so slow out of some of these corners that we just lose too much ground. I'm not even charging the Vesti. is not alongside enough he's just going to tuck in just about holding him back here
fuel is not an issue. We're down to just uh, one lap of fuel deficit and we've been lapped. So Drogovic is now effect effectively fuel net zero. And we're only two, we're not even two thirds of the way through the Grand Prix yet. Right, come on. Have that lunge. No, I was hoping he'd get through and we get the DRS off him. All right, he's got us this time. And he will get DRS on the next straight as well. So we've got to make sure we don't get dropped. Going into uh, turn two. At least we managed to get uh, Felipe almost fully charged again. Should hopefully be able to stay with Schumacher now. Uh, Vesti needs more battery. No one to uh, to run behind to actually get it charged up. help if you shout energy <laughs> I'm chugging energy drink at the moment to try and stay awake um, yeah Drogovic just doesn't quite have enough pace uh, um, Sonoda's catching as well yeah I think we're going to finish 16th and 17th uh, sorry 17th and 18th just don't have the car and we're not really going to have a car that can do anything, really, until we get to Singapore. The next race is going to be even more brutal. At least we've had, you know, some laps where we've been in a better position than we would expect. And we have challenged a little bit. Let's see if I can close back up the DRS here. Used energy. Uh, I'll use a bit of fuel as well. Um, but yeah, the next circuit's going to absolutely ruin us. Um, after that, we go to Zandvoort. Uh, again, it's not a circuit that's going to suit our car. After Zandvoort is, Mo is Monza. Um, while we don't have great straight line speed, we do have decent low speed performance. And we might have our new underfloor by Monza. I can't remember if we were brushing it for Monza or not. So we might have the new underfloor, and that will definitely help us. And Monza, we might be able to pull off a weird result. Uh, after Monza, we go to Singapore, which is probably the best chance we have in the remainder of the season to actually get points. Um... And then after Singapore, where do we go after Singapore? Uh, Suzuka, which again is going to be rough for us. Kota, we might do quite well at Kota. Mexico, we may be able to do something. Sao Paulo, probably not, but you never know. Yes, Marina is not going to be great. And that's the end of the season. So, yeah, uh, we don't have many opportunities re you know, remaining to us in what's left of the season here. Save fuel. Okay. We have managed to get back onto Schumacher here. So, let's see if we can stay with him. See if we can get a little bit of battery back in the car as well while we're doing it. Uh, yeah, Vesti's going to be 18th this race. 
just a question of whether Djokovic can hold on 16th or if he's going to go to 17th. Barris just had a quick look at what you get with Williams. Yeah, uh, it's not a, it's not a great starting point. Again, without restricting your development, you know you can do something pretty special um, in season two. I mean, you saw what we did in season two, uh, where we won both championships. No matter who you play with, you need to put some kind of restrictions in because at the end of season two, it usually gets too easy regardless of which team you're with if you're playing well it depends if you play the way I play then yeah without restrictions it's it's too easy after season 2 with a lower ranked team it's too easy after season 1 for the most part with with some of the teams we're not okay on fuel we're right. fine on fuel the gap that Verstappen's got. Verstappen's on a two-stop, I believe. I think Hamilton's on a one-stop, maybe. But even there's only 4% difference in tyres. Look how far ahead he is now. It's 32 seconds clear. Um, but yeah, as I was saying earlier, uh, what you start with with Williams and what you start with with um, Aston Martin on the whole pretty similar it's a much bigger budget but if you want to sign uh, different drivers then obviously that's going to eat up your cost if you want to replace your staff that's going to eat up your cost so go with either team Tires are holding on reasonably well, but again, you can see the pace just isn't there. When are we scheduled to stop? Lap 52. That'll give us 18 laps. Okay, we are five laps away from our pit stop. If we go on to softs before anyone... Oh, Russell's pitting already. So, Russell was one of those who started on softs. Went to hards, I think. Yes, he did. And now he's going to mediums. Same for Alonso and same for Joe. All right, we've gone ahead of Joe and we've come out right behind Alonso, but we're not going to have the grip to stay with him. So I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to burn up my battery for, for no reward. Um, we're in the mix with Joe here. Uh, but we do have a Ferrari right behind us. So we're going to have to pull over almost immediately. In fact, we're doing that now. I think that's Leclerc who's just gone through. It is Leclerc who started way at the bottom, the the bottom of the grid. He's now up to third. And there's Perez and Sainz behind.
All right, we're into the pit window. Uh, gap to our drivers is actually pretty substantial now. So absolutely no risk of complications with a double stop. I'm going to need your guys' help to stay awake and <laughs> start firing questions at me. Anything at all. Anything you want to talk about. Um, need something to help keep my mind active. As we get into the last 20 laps of this race. What's the next game I'm looking at playing? Uh, I was actually going through my library earlier today. Um, for those of you who haven't already done so, um, it's worth signing up for PlayStation Stars. It's free, um, and you can get little rewards every time you buy something off the store in terms of points. Um, they do little campaigns every month where you can earn um, just naff little digital collectibles but you can also earn again points and when you get enough points you can start cashing those in either to get a game off the store i think there's only like three or four games available and i'm not really interested in any of them um but you can also trade in your points for um uh gift cards on the store so you get what is it 1250 points you get five pound gift card uh, I've got enough for that already. I'm at like 1,700 points. Um, and one of the games that I can get points off, another 50 points off uh, this month is uh, Jedi Fallen Order because it's on PlayStation Plus this month. So I'm thinking of... Uh, I, I downloaded that this morning and I'm thinking of, again, uh, I, I didn't really play the PS5 upgrade. I platinumed it on PS4 and then when they did the PS5 one I just imported my save and instantly pinged the platinum but I'm thinking of playing through that again I just need to load the game and I get my 50 points but I'm thinking of playing Jedi Fallen Order again and actually experiencing the PS5 version properly um, I've got a few other games as well um, I'm, I'm kind of halfway through Bridge not um, uh, track to Yomi at the moment uh, it's fun but it gets a bit tricky a bit tough with the combat um, what else am I in the middle of playing um, I'm about halfway through uh, Stray I'm really enjoying that uh, I picked up uh, Kina Bridge of Spirits about three four months ago maybe even longer maybe six months ago i still haven't played that yet so that is something i'm seriously considering starting soon as well uh and then i've got loads of other games you know some that i've had in my library for years now and i haven't touched at all so um yeah i've got a few things i want to i want to think about the witcher uh i want to probably play god of war again but on the ps5 upgrade before I get Ragnarok. Uh, so quite a few games there that I've got to play or I'm considering playing. Looks like there's been a lock -up. Did they patch Red Dead? For oh, oh, Norris just went wide. Uh, just didn't quite catch the replay there. I just saw him parked up at the chicane. Uh, we've gained a place. That was very good. Oh, and we're in the pit window as well. I completely missed that. Like Aston Martin have just 
gained a race position. Let's take a closer look. So we Let's should see Drogovic parked up. The there he is. Uh, there's Norris parked up. Uh, let's take advantage of that and box both our drivers for their soft tyres. Box, box. Uh, yeah, does anyone know, did they do a performance patch for uh, Red Dead for the PS5? Because last time I played it, I didn't box, really box. notice any difference. It's it's a great game still, but Red Dead Online is just it's just a shell. And it, it could have been so much more than it is. All right, we're undercutting quite a few cars here, potentially with the uh, switch to softs. Can we capitalise on that? Um, let's see. Let's see how that shakes out. We've got loads of fuel spare. We're going to be... We're going to be almost a lap down. Well, yeah, well, have a spare lap's worth of fuel by the time we cross the line, I think, at the end of the race. If not more. Um, Let's see, Anthony's playing Yakuza and Cyberpunk. I haven't touched Cyberpunk since I got it refunded off the store. Uh, it was awful when it launched. It was just, it became really hard to keep playing it. And so I stopped and got my refund off Sony when they offered it. And I haven't gone back to it. I haven't uh, considered getting it again. Do I know if they're doing a Destiny 3? They're still pumping out new stuff for Destiny 2. Uh, and I've often considered maybe going and giving it a go. I, I enjoyed Destiny 1 in terms of the gameplay. And the gunplay itself was fantastic. But it was very small in terms of content. And the add-on content wasn't very much for the price you paid for it. I know they moved to a different model once they got away from Activision, but yeah, I just, I got kind of put off getting back into Destiny by my experiences with Destiny, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, the way Bungie would not stop nerfing anything that became a gun that people started using on a regular basis, instant nerf on it. I remember when the Volta Glass came out and you had the, uh, I forget what it was, the fusion rifle, the special fusion rifle you got as a very rare reward for completing the Volta Glass. And that thing was a monster of a gun. Absolute monster of the gun. And by the time I got mine, they'd nerfed the shit out of it. All right, Yuki is pitting. Can we're going to jump in with uh, Drogovic. Can we jump in with uh, Vesti as well here? Maybe. Oh, oh. Has he got a... Was that a wing change as well? That was a long stop. He must have had a wing change as well. I didn't even realise he damaged his wing. Bonus. And he's going to have to pull over and let a Red Bull through if he's not careful. So, yeah. Um, I don't know about Destiny 3 if they're going to do one. They probably will at some point, but I think they're just going to keep pumping out new content for Destiny 2 for another year or two at least, I think. Uh, 
uh, Mr. Watts have recently upgraded his sub subscription to Extra. Um, I looked at doing it, but I mean, I've got such a big backlog of games in my library and so many PlayStation Plus essential games from over the years that I've never really played that I'd just be paying an extra, what is it, £15 a year? No, it's more than that, isn't it? It's 50 for a year, 85, I think. So it's an extra, what, £35 a year for a load more games that I probably won't play. Um, I just, I couldn't see the logic or justification in doing that, personally. So that's why I'm stuck with just the essential tier. Just a bit too heavy on the brakes, and they've locked up. All right, uh, that lock-up will drop Joe back a little bit. He might have damaged his tyres a bit but he's going to be fine he's going to be able to go to the end on those uh, Norris uh, is Norris going to the end he might be and we are gaining on him by about seven tenths of a lap so we are in a position to potentially overhaul Norris here uh, who else is out there that might stay out Schumacher, we're lapping much faster than Schumacher. He's probably going to pit. Oh no! Let's see what happened there. God so damn it! I was just looking at, and thinking, oh, we're going to overtake him. We're going to overtake him, and we're going to end up in the wall. No, that's going to be a big blow to the team. Yes, team. Well, that was my reaction. <laughs> um, bugger. Alright, so now we may not get Norris after all. <laughs> um, okay on fuel. Hmm. Maybe we still will. Who else could pit? Um, Ricardo's probably staying out. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's a bit tricky. There's some of these guys... Theoretically, all these guys on hearts could go to the end, but some of them I don't think will. see GTA 6 is the other game you can't wait for I am um, nervous about GTA 6 because um, uh, it's not the same team that's been there for the success of the, all the previous games um, Dan House is gone Laszlo's gone. Uh, who else has gone? Someone else has gone as well. Uh, you know, three really big players in in the writing and, and scripting of the previous Red, um, you know, GTA games. They're all gone. Uh, I I don't think GTA 6 is going to be the game that people think it, it's going to be. And I don't think that's going to be a good thing. So I am I am wary of GTA 6. I, I am expecting a disappointment. I'm not saying it's not going to be a good game, but I don't think it's going to be what people are thinking, are hoping it's going to be. So yeah, that's that's my thoughts on GTA 6. We are closing quite quickly on Norris. So that is still on. Uh, Mr. Watts is thinking of getting forespoken. Did you try the demo? I haven't. I don't know if it's still available. Um, but they did for, uh, um, put up a demo of the Spoken after the Game Awards. I meant to download it and try it and I never got around to it. And I don't know if it's still on the store anymore. It looks interesting, but I have such a limited budget 
but uh, it's very rare I'll buy a game brand new. I generally just tend to pick up small games on sales now. It's not that many games I buy at launch. I really want to get um, Ragnarok, but I'm waiting for a sale. I've been wanting to play Spider-Man Miles Morales. I know it's on sale now, but... I've been... Um, I've been wanting to get the uh, Ultimate Edition so that I can also get the uh, remastered version of Spider-Man for the PS5. And even now, it's still like 44, 45 quid for the pair. And I don't want to pay that. It's too much. So I'm just waiting for the day that I can pick that up for about 30 quid. Uh, Ragnarok is, what, 70 quid? I think. Hasn't been discounted yet. It's just, it's too much. I can't, I can't afford that. So, uh, yeah, uh, maybe February they might, you know, slap a small, a small deduction on it, take a tenner off or something. Maybe I can think about it then, but it's not cheap. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just biding my time with that. I didn't get uh, the original God of War until it had been out for about a year. Um, and then I picked it up on a Christmas sale at uh, the same time I picked up Spider-Man on sale. That had been out for a while as well. Uh, and I played both of those games over a Christmas a couple of years back. Three years ago, I think it was. Uh, I loved them both. Spider-Man, I think I platinumed in like three days. <laughs> um, or something silly like that. Oh, I, I know I completed the game in two days. I don't know if I got the platinum that quickly, but... Um, yeah, I just really loved the Spider-Man game. Um, uh, and I, I played in Platinum God of War uh, over a, a couple of weeks as well. I do need to replay that now that it's had its PS5 patch for you know the 60 frames 4K. Right, we have seven more laps to go. Who is that behind Vesti? Is that Verstappen again? God, it is. Jesus, we're about to get lapped a second time. I knew I should have taken an extra lap of fuel out. Vesti's been lapped by Magnussen. Uh, let me check my sponsors. Did I have fastest? Oh, I did. Ooh. I think I might have a last gasp dash for the fastest lap. The Forspoken demo is no longer available. Yeah, I had a feeling that would be the case. I missed my opportunity. On the back of Norris, though. We have caught Norris. There he is. Uh, so, given that Drogovic is close to Norris, and maybe in with a chance of getting... Well, no, he's not going to get Joe, is he? Um, but maybe in with a chance of Schumacher. I don't think I'm going to box... Drogovic, but I think I'm going to box Vesti uh, with a couple of laps to go because he's got nothing to lose and just really go for it. So let's put some battery in Vesti's car. We just need to charge up. Yeah, probably.
Ah, oh, 65 pounds. Yeah, I thought it was 70, but yeah, 65. It's about what I was expecting. It's the cheap version. Uh, it's ironic to say that that's the cheap version. Um, I know there's going to be like a, a digital deluxe edition with NAF add-ons that will do something, but mm, are they really worth the extra money? Someone has locked up. Where have they locked up? And who has locked up? I think there's been a lock up. It's Ocon. Does it's not help us. Not really. Looks like Ocon. And it's not and that this. bad a lock up either. Yes, that barely That's cost him anything. Put a little bit of battery in Dragovic's car. Actually, I probably should have waited till I made sure I got DRS before I did that. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, I did get DRS. Okay, excellent stuff. Seven laps to go. So, five laps to go, because we're two laps now, or at least we are with uh, Vesti. Drogovic is still one lap down. So he has six laps to go. Closing. Yeah, we've well, already made the decision. I'm going to pick Vesti anyway. Uh, we will box Vesti next lap. Uh, Drogovic. I'm going to try and make the pass this lap, I think. Let's go into overtake. Use overtake. And let's burn some fuel. Because we've got plenty of it. No saving required. Probably. I was clunky. I thought we were going to hit the back of him for a second then. Uh, come on, make the overtake. Make the overtake. Go on, son. This is good. Come on. Nope. All right, let's go into deployment. See if we can get him into the chicane. Energy if you need it. Yeah, copy. Oh, Leclerc made that look so easy. <laughs> All right, uh, we're boxing Vesti, so let's uh, bring him in for a brand new set of tyres so he can have a, tr a try and steal the fastest lap. He'll get no points for it, but he will get me 200 grand if he can do it. And I think he can. Doing a good job, keep pushing. Come on, make that pass. Yes, there we go. So we are through on Five, Norris. Yeah. So we're up to 15th. I don't think we're going to go any further than that. But maybe uh, Schumacher's too too far ahead yeah, now. Uh, so Vesti has got three laps. Good job. So one lap to warm up, one lap to push. And then... Well, two laps to push, really. Uh, how do you gift to the channel? Uh, I have a PayPal link on my profile page. Um, so, 
you can uh, you can click the link there. Um, I don't do super chats. I don't monetize my content. So, but I do leave the link up there if anyone ever wants to buy me a beer or something. We're not okay on fuel. All right, we've run out of battery with Felipe. Wow, we took two... Three seconds out of... Oh, wow. Maybe we might actually get Schumacher. I know we've run out of uh, battery. But we just took three seconds out of Schumacher in one lap. We've got three laps to go with Drogovic. Ah, deploy. Push. Full attack. Here we go. Fastest lap attempt for Vesti. Can use everything from the tires. Use everything. Can we do this? Uh, oh, thank you for the. Uh, the energy drink money there, Farah. Um, YouTube takes money if you do super chats. I mean, PayPal when you get PayPal has that little thing that you know you have to pay when you someone makes a, a payment to you, they charge a small percentage. Um, YouTube does something similar, but I think they take like 20, 30 percent of super chats, from what I've understood, from what I've heard in the past. Uh, they do take quite a quite a big chunk. Um, I know in the past if someone sent me like a tenner on PayPal I get like £9.40 or something like that maybe maybe a little less than that but it's it's less than 10% but for, with PayPal I'm not sure exactly what it is but yeah YouTube can take quite a bit from, from Super Chats which is one of the reasons I don't do them uh, Vesti got the fastest lap that is worth two hundred and twenty four thousand dollars and no points we are 5.9 seconds behind Schumacher we are closing fast we only gained 1.2 seconds on the last lap though uh, I don't think we're gonna do it we're so close we've got one more lap after this we haven't been lapped a second time yet. Let's give everything on the tyres and see if we can get Schumacher as well. So you good to push? Yep. This will be last lap. Right, what do we do across the line? 1.4 seconds. It's not enough, is it? Uh, Max Verstappen over the finish line. I think Gasly has just winner. lapped Schumacher. That might go against us as well. I don't know. We've so taken a second out of Schumacher line. already. It's, it's not impossible. It's highly unlikely, but it's not impossible. We might get him here. Less than three seconds. Given everything we've got left in terms of tyres, fuel, we've got plenty of fuel. Uh, battery, we've got, well, we've got no battery, but yeah, we just need one more lap, I think. We have low batteries. Yeah, two seconds. We needed one more lap to get Schumacher. I should have pushed earlier. Okay, well, 15th isn't bad, considering what our pace was like. I'm, I'm okay with that. We got the fastest lap with Vesti, I believe. Did I just see somebody off the track there? Or was that a recovery vehicle? What an incredible outcome. 
for Aston Martin's driver. Today, Aston Martin demonstrated that they can go very far indeed. Yep, they managed to bring everything together. Strategy, engineering and driving. They've had a very strong weekend indeed. With the race wrapped up, the team is ranked in ninth in the constructor standings. Next time, the teams will be adding another year to the legend oh. of spa Francorchamps. Oh, Anything can we're ninth at the Belgian Grand Prix. in the constructors. I forgot, Magnussen. Damn it, he scored points, didn't he? Yeah, he got another six points. Oh, crap. All right, well, McLaren failed to get any points. Norris, again, with a terrible race, losing five places there. Ricardo losing two. So we're still only two points off McLaren, but we're still struggling to keep with the, well, you know, to get to the points. But we've lost 8th place in the Constructors. That is so annoying. That's Kevin Magnussen for you. <sighs> Haas up 2 places there. So yeah, our fight is going to be with McLaren. We're going to have to keep developing the car. If we want to get 8th place. As long as the board's happy, we can probably get away with not completing our objective this season, but we definitely not be able to get away with it again next season, I don't think. And next season's going to be tough as well because of the regulation changes. Uh, not just in terms of the car regulation changes, but points will only be available for the top eight places next season. So, yeah. Hmm. Did we at least get closer to points yes for Felipe Freddy not so much um, good performance for Freddy he did get the fastest lap for us which was worth 224,000 uh, so good job Freddy uh, one successful overtake 19 successful defenses though he did hold up um, uh, Leclerc for a long time in the early stages of the Grand Prix there uh, three failed overtakes, six failed defences. Uh, as for Felipe, an impressive race. Five successful overtakes, eight successful defences, nine failed overtakes, six failed defences. Uh, he does have that extra pace at the moment. And with that extra point, that breaking of his will get even better. Uh, so, uh, again, how do we get the finish position streak? Very strange book, but that's another 784,000 I was not expecting. Um, we got the fastest lap, thanks to Freddy. So we ended up with 4.9 mil at the end of that race. That is quite tasty. Our CFD simulator is now in fully upgraded to uh, level two. And that is the final upgrade we can do in car development this season. Uh, so we can't upgrade anything else in that category. And here is our mid-season board review. Uh, we are below target. Having just fallen below target. Um, but we are not too far from getting back on target. Uh, Long-term objective, we're not going to achieve that this season. Not in a hope of hell. Um, but... Do we get any money from the board? And we do get a small bonus. They've give, decided to give us $750,000. They have medium confidence in us. I can't really ask her anything more than that. I think that's, that's a fair assessment. So let's check in with our inbox. Uh, breakdown of the Hungary Grand Prix, board confidence check-in. They are satisfied with our recent work as team principal. Um, they're happy that we're keeping finances under control. Let's check in with what their confidence was in the results. They were satisfied in Budapest. So we had that really 
uh, awkward couple of runs at the start of the season. Then we had those two amazing races in Baku and Montreal. Uh, then we did okay in Austria and better than expected in France. But a lot of satisfieds in there as well. It's it's going to be a lot of satisfieds for the rest of the season with maybe a really good result in Singapore, hopefully. Uh, maybe, possibly, an okay result at Kota. Uh, it does look as though we are going to have to continue car development, though, which is something I was hoping I could break away from. Uh, we are 32 days away from our research being done. Uh, or well, the first part of our research being done. We're not going to get the new floor for Spa, but I think it's going to drop for Monza, uh, which is where we're definitely, definitely going to need it. Uh, spare suspension is done. Uh, car development reports is, yeah, not looking great. High speed's now the worst on the grid. The DRS isn't amazing either. Uh, I think we need a new rear wing. All right, we're caught up on emails. So let's see. Uh, we've got a point for Felipe. Let's improve his braking again. And that gets him up to a 70 overall. Nice. Uh, Freddy Vesti. Yeah, we really need to get this braking stat up as quickly as we can. Uh, how far away is he from another point? One more race. So next race, we'll get him one. In fact, actually, we've got a three-week break. He might actually have a point going into the next race uh, it's possible might earn enough in passive experience thanks to our driver simulator uh, let's have a look at our staff uh, no points for either of these guys although Andrew Green's going to get one before the next Grand Prix uh, Alessandro is not Chris Cronin is a long way off another point, and Ben is also a very long way off another point. Okay. Uh, is there anything we can really do with our facilities? Uh, no. Not really. We've got all this money, 18 mil. I would love to just go into uh, our car development and just slap 18 mil down and upgrade our wind tunnel uh, and maybe get very close to upgrading one of these two uh, again as well you know or, or maybe even putting another upgrade there we go 18 mil we could do the design center but the regulations we put down was two in total in this category and i'm starting to regret that now <clears throat> still it's going to make it challenging uh, wind tunnel is definitely going to get an upgrade straight away next season and to be honest i don't think i'm going to upgrade the design center next season i'm probably going to do another cfd upgrade next season uh really work on improving the performance of development itself we will be refurbing as and when we need to that's not restricted but in terms of upgrading yeah, no more upgrades at all in this category this year. Uh, so, uh, going back to where we were with cars. This is our current state of affairs. That underfloor is on the way. 39 days, I do believe, is in time for Monza. Because um, we've got Belgium. And then I think the week after that goes straight to Zandvoort. Or well, it might be two weeks after. I think it's two weeks after we go to Zandvoort. So maybe we get it for Zandvoort. Maybe we get it for Monza. I'm not sure which one. Uh, we do have a new ATR period dropping just before our side pod research finishes. So I think um, we did... Was it a front wing or a rear wing we did? I'll have to check. Um, I think it was a front wing that we put ours in. Uh, but we definitely des desperately need a new rear wing uh, to improve our drag reduction, to improve our cornering speeds, and more importantly, to improve our DRS as well. So I think that's going to be the next big thing that we do 
uh, once this side pods research is done and then we'll have to kind of concentrate on actual research again as well and we're gonna have to wait actually till the front wing's done because one engineer is not going to cut it we're going to need at least four engineers uh, to get that front wing out in any time that is kind of useful for us so uh, we're going to leave it here for tonight um we have got a three-week break until spa today is what day is it today it's wednesday so we're up to thursday technically now uh, so we will be back tomorrow night for um the next episode of challenge mode uh that will be uh here at spa we'll get the mid we the mid-season break out of the way and then go into spa itself uh, and then Friday we'll be back with Williams and then Monday I know we were supposed to do it Monday this week but we, uh, I was just too tired uh, we will be back with Haas I promise <laughs> we will get Haas back up and running again so um, thank you uh, for watching I hope you've enjoyed tonight's race even though we didn't really get a great result um, thank you for keep helping me stay awake um, Thank you for the uh, uh, the energy drink money. I will uh, go through my emails and 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 uh, go through that once we're logged off. Um, and so I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>